Hi guys, this is Sebastian again from CodingTheSmartWay.com and in this new video tutorial um, we are going to take a look at Apollo Client and we will be using Apollo Client together with an Angular project. So you will learn how to set up an Angular project from scratch, then installing Apollo Client and we will be using Apollo Client within that project to uh, request um, data by using a GraphQL and accessing a GraphQL server endpoint and uh, then we will be fetching the data and uh, yeah, uh, processing that data in our Angular application and outputting that data in uh, the uh, web user interface. So stay tuned. So before getting started with our project, let's first take a, a quick look at uh, the Apollo Projects website and um, you can find uh, the website at um, apollographql.com uh, here you can see the home page of the apollo project and the apollo project is not only about uh, the client framework apollo is also uh, offering a, a graphql server you can use together with uh, node.js but in this tutorial of, of course we will uh, be focusing on the Apollo client project and if I click on client you can see <coughs> it takes me to the Apollo client uh, website and here you can find uh, more information about Apollo client um, you can see Apollo client is not only available for Angular it's available for all the major JavaScript based web frameworks and for Android iOS and so on um, so you can find more information here if you uh, maybe are interested in using Apollo Client together with React or Vue. Um, you can take a look here at the website. In this tutorial we will be using Apollo Client with Angular. So um, that's only one option. And in the first step now we are going to initiate a new Angular 5 project from scratch. So to initiate a new Angular project I will be using the Angular command line interface um, and um, the Angular CLI website can be found at cli.angular.io. If you have um, installed Angular CLI on your system already, uh, that's perfect, you're ready to go. If not, you can just follow the uh, four simple steps here um, presented on the website and especially the first command here the npm install minus g at angular slash cli that's the command you need to execute first on your system to make angular cli available having installed it you um, have the option to use a new command which is called ng and that is exactly what we are going to do next okay so let's switch to the command line and um, making use of uh, the Angular uh, command line interface by typing in ng um, and then we're um, using the option new to uh, simply say that we want to initiate a new project and then we need to specify the name of that project so I'm going to use angular-apollo um, uh, as the name um, and if I now hit return you can see uh, Angular CLI is downloading uh, the project template and then making sure that all the needed dependencies are installed by using npm again. Uh, this is taking just a second to complete here, so let's wait for uh, the installation process to finish. Okay, here we are. You can see it's saying project Angular-Apollo successfully created. That is what we wanted to see. And the next step is you can change into the newly created um, project folder um, and just uh, trying out that everything has been downloaded and installed successfully by once starting um, the um, Angular CLI development web server, which is done by using the command ng uh, surf. So here you can see the web server is now running and it's listening on uh, port 4200. So um, this is the, the um, URL we need to use um, in the browser um, to check if um, the project is working successfully. And if we are getting an output here, welcome to app, 
um, you can see it here that's the default output of the default angular project template and so that is the proof that we now see that the project has been set up successfully and is running and now we can move on to um, add our implementation before doing so of course we first need to install a few things to make use of apollo client and that is the next step now so um, back on the um, terminal window here let me first stop on the web server so that we now can add a few dependencies to our project and the way we are adding dependencies here is to use npm install command again so let me type in npm install and then i need to add all the um, packages we do need to um, make use of uh, apollo client in our application the first package name is apollo dash angular um, then we need apollo dash angular dash link dash http then we need apollo dash client um, apollo dash cache dash in memory like so uh, then we need the graph ql dash tag package and finally graph ql itself okay i'm hitting return and um, now it takes a few seconds to download everything to our uh, node underscore modules folder and uh, yeah downloading it um, saving it in node underscore modules and making it there with available within our project so here you can see uh, the installation is um, <clears throat> is done all the packages have been added successfully to uh, the project uh, with all the uh, dependencies added as well and now um, we can uh, move on and uh, yeah start the implementation part of this tutorial and to do so of course we need a code editor uh, so let me start up uh, my project um, in uh, the code editor of my choice which is um, visual studio code in that case so i can simply use the corresponding command here code and then dot to open uh, the current folder uh, in visual studio code so um, if you do like you can use of course any other code editor that's uh, not a problem but visual studio code is offering um, very good support for um, GraphQL based projects. So that is what I'm going to use here. Okay. So in the next step, let's open up um, app.module.ts here from uh, the uh, SSC app folder. And uh, what we are going to um, need here is to import a few modules first. <clears throat> so um, let's add the following import statements um, first of all we do need the HTTP client module so let me quickly import HTTP client module um, from the uh, at angular slash common slash HTTP <coughs> library um, next we do need of course the Apollo module and we are importing it from Apollo uh, Angular like so and uh, then we need to uh, import HTTP um, link module and this is imported from um, apollo-angular-link-http. Okay, and finally, of course, we need to add uh, those three modules to uh, the array, which is assigned to the imports property of the add ng module decorator as well. So let's add first HTTP uh, client module um, next Apollo module 
and finally of course HTTP link module okay like so let's save it um, the HTTP link module uses internally the HTTP client so HTTP client is a part of HTTP client module so that's the reason why we've imported HTTP client module first um, and uh, so, yeah, that's the prerequisite to um, be able to use um, the HTTP link module services here. So the next step is to make Apollo service and the HTTP link service available in our application. And uh, if you are already familiar with Angular, um, you of course know that this can be done by using dependency injection. Um, so this is a way um, in which we are making both services available. And we do that, we're using dependency injection right here inside of app.module.ts. And uh, that's the reason why we first need to add uh, the services to our import statements. So the Apollo service is added here to the import statement where we are importing Apollo, Apollo um, module, of course. So let's import the service as well. Um, and the HTTP link service, of course, needs to be added here to the import statement um, of HTTP link module. So now both service uh, classes are available and to inject Apollo and HTTP link into our application here right in the app module class, we do need to add um, a constructor to the class. So the class at the moment, you can see it here, it's empty. There is nothing inside. And now I'm adding the constructor here. And okay, um, now we can inject it. So let's say Apollo is of type Apollo and HTTP link is of type HTTP link. So two parameters, and that's exactly the way how dependency injection is working in Angular. You simply need to supply the constructor of the class you would like to inject the objects into with the parameters. And um, yeah, Angular knows um, then uh, what is needed, basically Apollo service and HTTP link service, and is automatically creating instances of both classes and then you are ready to use both uh, services by yeah um, either Apollo or HTTP link. So now we have both instances available. We can make use of the Apollo service and we can make use of the HTTP link service here in our app module class. Um, and now we can make use of the Apollo service actually um, to um, call the create method to establish a connection to a GraphQL server endpoint. Um, and that's what we are going to do inside the constructor, which is still empty. So inside the curly braces here. So I'm calling Apollo.create and then passing in an object consisting of um, two properties. The first is the link property and we need to supply the link property here um, with um, a link to the endpoint and the link is created by calling HTTP link service dot create. And here we are calling this method and need to pass in an object again. This object has a property we need to supply a value for. That's the URI to the endpoint. And uh, here we need to put in the URL of our server endpoint. Um, this will be done in the next step because first of all, we need to make sure that we have actually a server, which is not yet the case. Um, but in a moment, I'm going to tell you how you can create your own uh, GraphQL server, which is suitable for uh, supplying our sample application with, uh, with a set of test data. Um, but we do need here inside the object which is passed to the apollo.create method, uh, we do need 
a second uh, property which is called cache because we would like to use um, a caching mechanism here and um, the uh, cache uh, should be managed by um, a class which is called in memory cache so we are creating a new instance of that class in <coughs> memory cache and in memory cache of course is not available right now so uh, we need to make sure that this is available here in app.module and maybe you are remembering we have installed um, a package or downloaded a package here for our project which is called apollo cache in memory and that's a package now we do need to import in memory cache here so let's quickly add that import statement here import um, in memory cache from and now the package name which is apollo dash cache dash in memory like so and now it is available you can see it here um, um, no error is shown, so in memory cache is recognized and is available so that we can make use of it. So that's a way um, which uh, should be used to create um, for our Apollo client here in the Angular application, create a link to the server endpoint. And the only thing which is missing so far is, of course, URL to our endpoint. Um, and that will be completed in the next step. So um, to create a GraphQL server um, to be able to define an endpoint, which we can then use to uh, establish a link um, in our Angular application. Um, there are several ways, of course. Uh, one way would be you can create your own and set up your own GraphQL server um, by using Node.js and Express. There is a package which is called um, express-graphql and you can use um, that library to set up your own GraphQL server with Node which is in, very easy. Um, there is a tutorial available if you like to dive deeper into the topic at um, my website um, which is called creating a GraphQL server with Node.js and Express. You can um, yeah, take a look add that tutorial if you wanted to know how to set up your own um, node.js based graphql server from scratch um, that would be one way if you are following that tutorial you will have a server with an endpoint available to supply our application with data um, of course that's not the only way the other option um, which is available to create your GraphQL server is to use Apollo Launchpad. Um, that's a project which is available at launchpad.graphql.com. And that's simply a cloud service which um, enables you to create your GraphQL server here right in the cloud. It's just a playground you can use for um, yeah, sample projects like um, we are doing at the moment. Um, and that's an easy way because you do not need to install any anything on your system. You do not need to create a project folder first and installing the NPM dependencies and so on. You can um, yeah, go to that URL and then start setting up your server immediately. Um, let me quickly introduce you to uh, the Launchpad UI. You can see it here. Um, on the left side, you can put in your code, um, your JavaScript code to create the server. And then on the right side, there is graphical running, uh, which gives you the possibility of executing um, queries, mutations, and, th and so on directly and seeing the result. And then you can see if your server is working as expected. So Launchpad is a great alternative you may use if you are working just in a in a sample project and trying out a few things, it's very easy to set up your server instance. Um, once uh, set up, um, you have the endpoint available here um, so that you can copy and pass that endpoint directly to um, the um, URI property in um, the object which um, is passed to the HTTP link.create method. Um, so that's the endpoint and 
If you do not want to deal with the server anyway, you can even use my launchpad. So I have already set up a launchpad which is suitable to uh, supply our Angular sample application with the right set of data. So let me quickly uh, go through the code here. We have defined um, yeah, two queries, um, the all courses query and the course query. Um, so uh, this is giving you already a hint. We are dealing with a set of courses, online courses, um, and um, yeah, that's a custom data type defined here. So every course has um, a few properties here, ID, title, also description, topic, URL. Um, and uh, we have uh, prepared um, a few sample uh, data sets here in the courses data array and um, you can find the resolver here which is mapping uh, the query uh, types to uh, the functions which are returning the data um, so we are mapping here all courses to get all courses function and course to get course function uh, here is the implementation available so um, everything is set up and uh, for example if i'm going to execute uh, here in the graphical section um, the all courses query you can see i'm getting back um, the result comprising all three sample records so um, if you do not need to um, to set up the server on your own if you do not want to deal with uh, the launchpad code here anyway, you can simply use my uh, GraphQL endpoint here created with the Apollo launchpad. I will put that link in uh, the tutorial description so that we are ready to go by copying <coughs> that link, going to our code and passing in that link here, right um, as a value uh, to the URI property. So now that we have set up uh, the uh, Apollo client connection in our Angular application um, to the server endpoint, uh, we are ready to um, move on to the next step. And uh, in the next step, we are going to expand the Angular application and uh, include the code which is needed to retrieve uh, data from our endpoint and uh, of course displaying uh, that data to the user and the browser. Um, yeah, and therefore we are going to add a new component um, to the project by using Angular CLI again. And as you can see here, I've already opened up the integrated terminal here in my uh, code editor. Um, and I now can use uh, the ng command to create a new component. So I'm saying ng g for generate, c for component, and then um, specifying the name of my component, which is simply called a list because we want to retrieve um, the list of courses data and then printing out that list. Uh, okay, so hitting return, you can see it's uh, creating four new files here in uh, the folder SSC app. A new subfolder is created, a list containing uh, those four new files. Um, and it's updating uh, app.module.ts. So, and uh, if you're now taking a look here in app.module.ts, you will notice that list component, which is our new component, is automatically imported here from, um, from the new file. Uh, and add it to the array which is assigned to the declarations property so that we are fully set up. We are ready to use a list component in our application. Um, of course, now we need to bring in the code into list component, bring in um, the code on the one side and the template uh, code, of course, on the other side to complete the implementation. Uh, and that's what we're going to do now. So there is one more file to add because we do need a file which uh, contains the uh, type definitions we are going to work with. Um, so you know we have defined um, a custom um, course type 
uh, server side and now we need to have a corresponding course type defined on client side and uh, to do that i'm adding a new file here um, let's say touch and i'm going to add that file in uh, src slash app slash and the file name is types um, dot ts okay like so here you can see this is a new file i'm opening up um, and i'm going to put in the uh, code to define the type first of all we are defining course and because we want uh, to use that custom type later on in um, our components i need to export it so we can import it in the component um, so export type and i'm uh, naming it course and it equals uh, the following definition we have an id of type number um, then we do need a title property which is of type uh, string of course um, I'm adding author property as well, again type string, um, the description property, uh, which is also of type string, um, then the topic, and finally the URL. Uh, okay, we need a semicolon here. And then I do need a second type, which is defining um, my query. So again, export type query. And uh, we would like to use the all courses query. So we are expecting uh, the query type to have a property all courses. And uh, this is of type array of course. So this way, okay, um, that's our type definition. And now we can use both types. So type query and type course in our list module. So let's continue in uh, file list.component.ts. Uh, that's the file where uh, the class uh, implementation of class list component can be found. In the first thing now, uh, which needs to be added are a few import statements, of course. So we do need to import um, the Apollo service. So we are importing Apollo from uh, from the Angular uh, from the Apollo dash Angular package. Um, next thing is we do need to import um, observable from um, rxjs slash observable. And uh, then we need to import um, map. Map is imported from, again, the rxjs library uh, slash operators. Then we need to import um, GQL from GraphQL dash tag, like so. And finally, we do not need to forget to import our types. So, course and query. And we are importing both types uh, from uh, the types.ts file, which is available in our project. So we have imported the Apollo service. Now we need to use dependency injection once again here in the constructor of the list component class to uh, create an instance of or supply the class with an instance of uh, the Apollo service. Um, so let's use the private keyword here, private Apollo of type Apollo, <coughs> like so. And then you can see the ng on init method is already um, available here. That's an Angular lifecycle 
method which is uh, called every time this component gets initialized in our application and that's the perfect place where we can put in our code which is needed to um, send the uh, GraphQL query to the server so that we are retrieving the data and then have uh, the set of data available um, here once the initialization of that component is finished. Um, so that's what we're going to do um, now. First of all, let's add a class member which is used to store um, the data into which is retrieved from uh, the server. Let's name it courses. It's of type observable and observable is also typed here um, and it's uh, returning an array of uh, courses. So like so. And now back in Angie on init, um, we are executing um, or requesting the data by um, using the following call. So we are signing the result to this.courses um, and then making the call here, this.apollo. Uh, that's the instance of the Apollo client or the Apollo service. And then we are using the watch query um, method here. And we are saying it's returning um, a result of type query. Um, and then we need to uh, pass one parameter to the call of watch query, and that's um, an object. And the object is containing the uh, um, property query. And query gets assigned the GraphQL code, which is containing our query operation. And to embed GraphQL code here directly in our um, JavaScript code, we can now make use of the uh, GraphQL tag, the, uh, which we have imported as uh, GQL. And then as the syntax here is to include it as a multi-line string is to use backticks. So that's the option uh, which JavaScript gives us to include multi-line strings and it's perfect to include the GraphQL code here. And uh, let's define a query operation. So query, that's the keyword, the GraphQL keyword, which is used here. Then we're naming that query operation all courses and uh, using curly braces here. And in our all courses query operation, one query is embedded. And that's again, all courses, which is um, a query which has been defined when setting up our server. Um, and we are uh, defining um, what fields should be returned for um, for courses. And that's ID. We want to have the title, um, the author, the description, um, the topic and the URL. So basically we are requesting um, all fields which are available for a course. Um, okay, like so, that's our GraphQL code which is embedded here. Um, and then we can connect here with the value changes um, property and then connect with the pipe a transformation. Um, and for applying that trans transformation, we are calling the map function here. And we are saying, okay, please apply the following uh, function for transformation result. And then we're using the arrow function here is becoming result data dot all courses. So this is making sure that we are getting back a structure which is all only containing an array of courses because it's embedded in the result we are getting back in the uh, data uh, property. And by applying that transformation, we are extracting it out and only, um, and only leaving back the array. Okay, let's put finally a semicolon here. Uh, so that's the code um, uh, which is needed here inside of our list component class implementation. So to make uh, sure that the user interface of our Angular web application 
um, is uh, looking nice. We are going to use uh, the Bootstrap 4 framework and we are applying some of the Bootstrap 4 CSS classes within our template, which we um, do need to, um, to add to our application. Um, but before doing so, uh, this requires us to install and add Bootstrap as a dependency to our project first. Um, and that's exactly uh, what I need to do next. So let's uh, stop um, the web server, which is still running here um, for a moment. And the way you can add the Bootstrap 4 framework to the project is by using npm once again. So I'm saying npm install Bootstrap return. So this is downloading the uh, package and installing it to, again, the node underscore modules folder within our project. Um, you can see it here. So that it is available and um, part of that package are uh, the files then we need to include in our project to make bootstrap CSS classes available. So uh, we can have a look inside. So let's open up the node modules folder and you can see here are all our dependencies and bootstrap is available and inside the bootstrap directory, you will find the dist folder, which um, includes two sub uh, folders CSS and JS. And uh, we would like to add the bootstrap CSS file to our project and you can see it here um, the uh, minified version as bootstrap.min.css so that's exactly the file we need to include in our project um, and uh, the place uh, where we need to include that file um, is let's close the node underscore modules folder um, is in um, dot angular dash cli dot json and uh, if you take a look inside that file you will find here right in the apps section you will find um, a property a configuration property which is called styles and as you can see styles gets assigned an array here and by default the uh, project file styles dot css is already included and now we can uh, use uh, that location here and add <coughs> and add our bootstrap file, which is available in node underscore modules slash bootstrap slash dist slash CSS as seen before. And then finally the file name, which is bootstrap.min.css. Okay, so um, that's basically all. So now we can make use of bootstrap CSS classes within our template and the template, which is still missing is the list component template. And, uh, the file where the template code goes into is list.component.html. Uh, so you can see it here. That's the default template, just printing out list works. Uh, so we are going to remove that code here and then start adding the template code, which is outputting our list of online courses we received from the GraphQL endpoint. So just remember, we have um, stored the uh, um, array, uh, which is containing the data which we received from the server in um, the class member which is called courses so now we can um, iterate over that array and print it out and um, the template code which is needed for that is so uh, let's start here with uh, let's say a diff element and then we are using the ng4 directive and then the syntax which is used here is let course so uh, course is always containing the current um, record we are iterating over <coughs> of courses. So courses is um, the class member um, which is containing the uh, result from the um, API call. <coughs> and then we need, um, this is very important because courses is an observable. So it's receiving data in an asynchronous way. We need to apply 
um, the async pipe here. So async this way, um, so that uh, Angular and the ng4 directive is working even for that um, data source which is receiving data in an asynchronous way. Okay, so um, within that div element, let's uh, use um, another div element which gets assigned um, the bootstrap uh, CSS class uh, card. Okay, like so, and then maybe let's say we would like to apply some styling here, which we are doing inline. Um, we are setting the width to 100% um, and we are assigning a margin um, dash top of 10 pixels. Uh, okay, like so. Um, then we have the card body. Um, and within that body, we are using um, H5 headline. Um, okay, we need to assign a class here as well. The class we are going to use here is called card-title. And then we are printing out here in the title of our card um, by using the Angular syntax here um, with two curly braces. We are embedding an expression here and we are printing out the value which is available in course dot title. Okay, this is the way um, Angular is working. Now let's use an H6 here next and apply the card uh, dash subtitle class. Uh, maybe let's add a margin at bottom of two and text dash muted as well. And we are printing out here the information of the author also. So we are saying by and then using the uh, expression syntax once again to um, print out the value of course dot author like so. Um, next, let's use a paragraph, so a P element, and we are assigning the class of card uh, dash text here, and we are printing out um, the value which is available in course uh, dot description. Okay, and finally, the link to um, the um, course um, website. Uh, so let's use an ahref element here and we are setting uh, the destination again to the value which is available in course.url and we are um, applying a class here as well. The class we do need is card-link Um, and then we are saying go to course. Okay, so that's basically our template um, with the information the user should uh, see um, included. And the template is uh, printing out um, this part for every single course available in the courses array. So now all the list component template is in place and you can see uh, here in the integrated terminal, the web server is again running. Uh, but of course, if I now check the result in the browser here, uh, let's refresh it, uh, you can see nothing has changed. And the reason for that is quite clear. Um, the uh, list component uh, implementation um, is in place, the list component template is in place, but we have not included list component in our um, main application template yet. Um, so this is what we are going to do now so that we see the result from list component. And the main application um, template is the template of app component. And the template of app component, the implementation, the default implementation can be found in app.component.html. So this is exactly the HTML template code, um, which is 
used to um, to output the default view we just saw in the browser um, but this is obviously not what we want to have in our application so I'm going to delete it all uh, so let's start over again let's start with a div element here and assign the bootstrap container class within that container we first uh, add um, the output of our list um, component and uh, the way to include a list component here is if I again take a look at list.component.ts um, here you can see the selector was um, by default set to the value app dash list and um, the selector is describing the name of the um, uh, HTML element which needs to be used to include the output of that component in any other template so I can now go back to app.component.html and just um, include list component by saying app dash list okay like so uh, now that's the place in our output uh, where uh, we are displaying the result which is um, rendered by the template of list component okay but this is not all um, in addition I'd like to include um, yeah a simple um, navigation bar on the top just to make the layout look a little bit nicer uh, let's do that by using the nav element and assigning the classes nav uh, bar um, nav bar um, dash dark and bg bg dash primary um, okay no that's not the way I want to have so navbar navbar dash dark bg dash primary like so um, okay that's our nav element and within that nav element um, we are going to print out just a headline text um, by using uh, anchor element here assigning the class of navbar dash brand uh, if you like you can put a link uh, inside of here and then uh, including the text apollo client for angular sample application uh, okay like so Okay, so now everything is in place and it's time uh, for checking the final result in the browser and see if everything is working as expected. So let's uh, open up uh, the browser once again and you can see it. Um, that's the output um, and everything is as expected. We have the nav element here and then we have three times uh, the cart area uh, included in our output. Uh, with the information um, received from the uh, GraphQL server um, yeah you can see it here so uh, everything is working as expected and uh, now you have a running angular application with a GraphQL backend um, and the angular application is consuming data from that backend by using um, Apollo client okay so this was Sebastian from codingthesmartway.com. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope you do like my videos. If so, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel on YouTube. And also don't forget to visit my website at codingthesmartway.com. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye.